Hello, my name is Don Rainey. Now that you own a guitar, I want to show you how easy it is to play it. Please listen to your record all the way through and study your chart so you'll understand what we're going to do. Then go back and start learning. Take it slow and easy and don't over practice. Now, let's look at how a guitar works. The sounds come from six different size strings stretched between two slotted bars. The first slotted bar is called the nut and is just below the tuning keys. The other slotted bar, called the bridge, is down on the big rounded body of the guitar. So find both the nut and the bridge on your picture on chart number one. These slotted bars cut the strings to exactly the right length to make the proper sound. Now to make the sounds go higher, we have to shorten the strings by pressing them down onto the fingerboard with our fingers. And again, exactly the right length is very important. So the maker of your guitar has put a number of small metal bars across the fingerboard at just the right places. These are called the frets. And since the frets cut the strings at exactly the right place, we put our fingers behind the frets, not on them. Notice where the pick guard is on your picture. And then look at how to hold the guitar and pick. Hold both firmly but gently, don't squeeze. And notice in holding the pick that my little finger is resting on the pick guard. If you will do this, you'll learn to play with the wrist motion, which is the right way. Now look at the second line of pictures. First, I have drawn a picture of the nut, the strings, and the frets, and written in the string names and string numbers. I want you to think of the strings by number, with the biggest one as number six and the smallest as number one. Next, we have finger symbols, which we add to our picture on the strings to show just where to place our fingers, so study them carefully. Now let's get in tune. An improperly tuned guitar can't play anything right, so be very careful. The next track of your record will give you the notes to tune to. We'll start with string number six, the biggest one, and you turn the tuning key on your guitar until it sounds like mine. Then I'll play five, and you tune to match my guitar, and then four, three, two, one, and so on. Then I'll play all six strings over again, so you can correct for mistakes or stretching of the strings, which does lower the tone a little bit. Keep on playing this track and tuning until you know that you are right. Here is string number six. String number five. String number four. String number three. String number two. String number one. Now we do it all over again. String number six. String number five. String number four. String number three. String number two. String number one. As pictures number three and four of line two, I have given you another way to check your tuning and the notes to tune to if you were using a piano. In the third line of pictures, I have drawn a picture of the strings, the frets, the nut, and so forth, just as in the picture above it, but this time I have drawn in the finger symbols that show how to play a chord. Now remember, this is actually a picture with a double line at the top, meaning the nut, the other lines running the same way as the frets, and the lines running down as the strings. Now let's get ready for our first chord. Remember to play with your fingertips, except for bar chords, and to keep your left wrist dropped. Look at the C chord diagram. That's figure one on the third line of pictures. And to get your fingers in the right places, remember that the little O above the nut means it's an open string. So strings one and three are open strings. String number two has a position dot in the first fret so we put our first finger there. String number four has a position dot in the second fret, so we put our second finger there. Strings five and six have a position dot in the third fret. 
Now look at the picture carefully and you'll notice that we use the third finger to reach string six and the pinky to reach string five because the third finger is longer than the pinky. Properly fingered, your C chord sounds like this. The F chord is harder to play for most people, but it's very important to you as it's the first chord in which you control all the strings. And to make it easier, I have given you two pictures of different ways to play this chord as figures 4 and 4A. In figure 4, notice that the first finger goes across all of the strings in the first fret. While in figure 4A, the first finger bar sign means play strings 1 and 2 with the first finger, and our thumb comes up over the top of the neck to play string number six. Try both ways and then practice the easiest one. Played either way, the F chord sounds like this. The G seventh is a much easier chord to play. You notice it has three open strings and it sounds like this. Now, since your fingers have not yet had time to strengthen and loosen up, remember you can play any of these chords on strings one, two, three, and four all by themselves, forgetting five and six. Then, as your hands learn the new tricks, you could add string five and then string six. Now, one reason why many new guitarists get fuzzy sounding chords is that they accidentally touch a string with the side of a finger while trying to play another string and the accidentally touched string goes dull and dead sounding. To avoid this and to get used to the feel of your guitar, I want you to finger each chord and then play each string in turn like this. Now here is the C chord. Six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six. The F chord. Six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the G seventh. Six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do this over and over until you can play each chord clearly and change from one chord to another quickly and smoothly. When you've learned your chords, we're just about ready to start our first real tune. So tune up your guitar and let's go. Now we will have both picked notes and entire chords to think about. Picking means to play just one string. And when we strike all the strings together, we will call it a stroke. So we have picks or single notes and strokes or full chords. Look at chart number two. Now we can play by simply striking chords all the time, but it sounds much better and more interesting if we add picked notes. So here's what we'll do. First, we'll play in waltz time, also called three-quarter time, and we'll keep time by playing pick, stroke, stroke, pick, stroke, stroke, to a count of one, two, three, one, two, three. Now listen carefully. On the first count of one, two, three, we will pick string six as number one and play two chords for two and three. The next time we will pick string five and play two strokes. Then back to six and two strokes, then five and two strokes, switching back and forth from six to five and then from five to six each time we say one of one, two, three. Now let's get our fingers in the C chord position and try it. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, six, two, three, five, two, three. Now let's do the same thing with the F chord. One, two, three, one, two, three, six, two, three, five, two, three. And the G seventh chord. 
One, two, three, one, two, three, six, two, three, five, two, three. Now, if you have not yet learned the six string positions, you can play the same way on the first four strings, switching from string number four to string number three, and then back to four again for the picked note, like this. Four, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, three, two, three. Practice this picking and stroking over and over until you have a down pat. Then tune up your voice and we'll sing and play a swell old tune, Red River Valley. Now play slowly and carefully and speed up as you get familiar with the idea. Our beginning chord is C and our count is one, two, three, one, two, three. Look at the chord diagrams on chart number two and notice how the words change from one diagram to another as we go along. This will show you the exact word upon which you should change chords. Now don't forget, our count is one, two, three, one, two, three, and our technique is pick, stroke, stroke, pick, stroke, stroke. So here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, six, two, three, five, two, three. valley they say you are leaving we're playing the C chord we will miss your bright eyes now get ready to change the G seventh and sweet smile back to C now for they say you are taking now we're going to play F. The sunshine. Back to G seventh. That has brightened our path. For a while, back to C. Now next, let's notice that there are two kinds of time in music. Three quarter time or waltz time with a one, two, three count as we've been playing, and another kind called four, four or common time. And let's learn to play that right now. This time we will count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we'll change our way of picking and stroking to fit this new count. We will pick on count one, stroke on count two, pick on count three, and stroke on count four, or Pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke. Now we will also change back and forth from string five to string six and string six to string five for the pick note as we did before. Remember though, it's pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke. Practice this new kind of style till you can play it easily. And now we'll show you how Red River Valley also fits this kind of time. Now our technique is pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, and our count is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here we go. Pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, pick, stroke, six, stroke, five, stroke, six, stroke, five, stroke. Come and sit by my side ere you leave me. Now we're playing C. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. G seventh, now back to C. Remember the Red River Valley, F. And the cowboy, G seventh, who loved you so true. Now after you've gotten used to both kinds of time, you'll find that you don't have to pick strings five and six only for your pick notes, as any string in the chord can be picked and will be musically correct. So experiment with picking your notes on different strings any way you please, and you'll soon learn sequences that will sound just fine to you and your friends. Now on chart number two, I've written out the words to some favorite songs, and over the words I've written the progression, which means the way the chords change as you go along. 
be sure to make those changes exactly as you sing the part of the word over which the chord name is written. By the time you can play these tunes in both three-quarter time and four-four time, you'll be ready to ask your music dealer for a book of simple songs. Folk songs and western tunes are best for now and you'll find small chord diagrams written over the lines of musical notes for the piano. Again, the diagrams are written over the exact word or part of a word where you should change to that written diagram. In this way, you'll learn many new songs, and the diagrams will show you how to play other chords. The best way to learn more about playing your guitar is with a good individual teacher. However, if no teacher is available, you can explore the Wonderland further up the strings on records and charts with yours truly, Don Rainey. <laughs>